our cultural elites, they hate you. They really, really hate you. They love them. Right? Everything for them is about assuring their own sense of, of virtue and, and a, a place for them among the peoples. This, this is their goal. And never do you see this more than when it comes to people who are just panderers like Jon Stewart. So Jon Stewart has a new show on Apple TV. And this new show is basically just old man spouting left-wing propaganda talking points. And it's, it's awkward. It's hard to watch. But it does demonstrate how members of the left think of you, particularly in our entertainment elite. This is how they think of you. And they wish to push the most left-wing views imaginable. So here is Jon Stewart. This is the other night. Doing a, and first of all, the screen cap is everything. It is a white man sitting in front of a bill, uh, in, in front of a board that says the problem with white people, the problem with white people. And it's a bunch of people, white people looking like they are carving a turkey for dinner. It's like a traditional white family. When I say traditional, I mean, it looks like mom and dad and some kids and some grandkids. The problem with white people, says this old white man. And yes, Jon Stewart now qualifies as an old white man. Here he is ranting about how white people are the worst, Jon Stewart. For however sincerely we want to reckon and listen, the truth is America has always prioritized white comfort over black survival. Black people have had to fight so hard for equality that they've been irreparably set back in the pursuit of equity. Hmm. So... This 59-year-old white man is telling you that white people have always prized their own comfort. Now, apparently it doesn't apply to him, but here's the thing, it does apply to him. It does apply to him because Jon Stewart is about assuring his own comfort, his own ideological comfort. It makes him feel better to dissociate from the other bad white people. When he says this, he becomes one of the good white people. There's a point that black author Shelby Steele has made repeatedly in his book, White Guilt, that so much of our current media culture, so much of our elite culture is driven by white liberals who wish to run the whole thing. And no more even white liberals, white radical leftists who wish to run the whole thing. And the way that they get to maintain their moral imprimatur is by condemning all the other bad white people, all the other bigoted people. And Jon Stewart is indicative of this case. And so there is this very strange and awkward exchange between Jon Stewart and Andrew Sullivan, who is a gay white man, and a crazy white race baiting lady named Lisa Bond. Lisa Bond runs a, an organization that is just one of the great grifts I've ever heard of. I've talked about it on the program before. She runs it with Sarah Rao. And the entire thing is she gets together with guilty white upper crust liberals and she lectures them about racism. That is it. That it is called Race to Dinner. It costs 2,500 bucks. And you can enlist the services of Race to Dinner, according to Media whose helpful grifters will come to your house, eat your food, and tell you how racist you are. It's an actual thing. And Lisa Bond runs it. So Jon Stewart has on Lisa Bond and Andrew Sullivan. And Andrew Sullivan points out that wokeness is a big negative. For the most, vast majority of Americans, they're not interested in being categorized by race. They want to be treated as individuals. And Lisa Bond goes off on Andrew Sullivan because after all, he has no authority to speak. He is a white man. Now, just on the intersectional hierarchy, let's point out here that Lisa Bond is a white woman Andrew Sullivan is a gay white man. So I don't know Lisa Bond's sexual orientation, but assuming that she's not gay, this means that he outranks her on the intersectional hierarchy because Andrew Sullivan is openly gay. That doesn't matter because Andrew Sullivan is about to say something that is not in line with leftist thinking. You only get to be on the leftist intersectional hierarchy if you agree with everything that they say, which is how Jon Stewart gets to say the things he says. So Lisa Bond is about to rip into Andrew Sullivan and Jon Stewart will agree because Jon Stewart has lost the thread because Left-wing America has lost the thread. I'm going to put everybody in the thing. All of us white people do this. I don't care if we say we're abolitionists. I don't care if we say we're progressive. I don't care if we're literally members of the KKK. Every single white person upholds these systems and structures of white supremacy. And we have got to talk about it. If I could finger snap, I would finger snap right now. I <laughs> could finger snap it. And then... Look at all these white people talk about how morally superior to you they are. We have to talk about it, says Lisa Vaughn. Okay, let's talk about how much money you are making off of stupid, radical leftists who think that they've alleviated their white guilt by hiring a white broad to tell them about their own internalized racism. You morons. I mean, it's just incredible. But this has bled up to every element of our society, every element. The radical left, it starts, everything that starts off as a radical left proposal in America eventually becomes mainstream. And so now you have, for example, the NFL, which has announced that they are going to 
create rules that force the hiring of women and people of color. Force it, which, by the way, is a violation of the Civil Rights Act. And we talked at the beginning of the show about the the Biden administration suggesting it's a violation of the Civil Rights Act for you to say, I don't want my kindergartner indoctrinated with LGBTQ propaganda. You know, it's actually a violation of the Civil Rights Act, hiring people because of their race. That is a violation not only of the Civil Rights Act, it's a violation of the Equal Protection Clause of the 14th Amendment to the Constitution. But the NFL is doing it now. According to NPR, at an owner's meeting this week in Florida, the league announced other diversity steps as well. A six-person committee of advisors from outside the NFL to review the league's hiring practices and a commitment by teams to increase diversity among team owners, a fraternity that's almost entirely white. The NFL says teams have to actually hire a, quote, a female or a member of an ethnic or racial minority as an offensive assistant coach in 2022. So it's now a make-work program for affirmative action candidates over in the NFL. Why? Because after all, we are also racist. We are also racist. And this myth must continue to be pervaded that America is a deeply racist country, despite the fact that by polling data, we are perhaps the least, the least racist country on planet Earth. It's amazing how critics of America have spent zero time actually investigating other countries. So solipsistic and self-centered. The only country on Earth apparently is America. Who's got two thumbs and wants you to like and subscribe?